اوكي اي ام هادي خليلية بي اتش دي ستودنت ات ذا يونيفرستي اوف ترينتو اي ويل بريزنت بيبر تايتلد ويز ذا كواليتي اوف ليكسيكال سيمانتيك ريسورسز از ا سيرفي ذيس ورك از دان باي مي هادي عبد الحكيم اند فاوست فاوست جونكيليا اور بريزنتيشن Includes the following. Uh, first of all, I will speak about the lexical semantics field. Then I will define the lexical semantic resources, and we will see the applications uh, about lexical semantic resources. Then we will go to lexical semantic resources equality and the challenges for the lexicon equality. Uh, finally, we go to the approaches that evaluates the lexicon. Equality. Okay, uh, lexical semantics in general is a subfield of linguistic semantics. Uh, this field uh, in general focuses on the following. First of all, uh, it classifies uh, its uh, items, the lexical items. For example, uh, barot is a bird uh, as this classification. Uh, also in this uh, resource, The uh, focuses on the relations between lexical items. Uh, these relations are, uh, are categorized to two. Uh, first one, lexical relations. Uh, these relations in general maps uh, word forms. Uh, for example, written is derivationally related to write. The second one is the sem semantic relations. Uh, these relations are maps the word meanings together. Uh, for example, wheel is a part metronym of Hegel. Also, the most important thing in this uh, field, the how to map lexical items in, to a specific domains, and then these domains uh, to be as sensets. As uh, the sensets, I will talk about this in the next slides. Uh, for example, in the cooking domain, as, uh, as we see, The limas that will be in this domain as a boil, bake, fry, and roast. Uh, in general, in lexical semantics, as we'll see, it will be as a network. Uh, I mean, the sensets uh, connected together through the uh, lexical semantics uh, relations. Okay. Uh, about lexical semantic resources, what is the lexical semantic resources? They are machine-readable lexical databases that organize lexical items based on lexical semantics theory. Uh, in general, lexical semantic resources are different from uh, traditional dictionaries. Uh, first of all, lexical semantic resources are conceptual dictionaries. Uh, two, uh, the lexical semantic resources divide the, the, the uh, items, uh, their items into categories based on the part of speech, such as nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. Also, each concept is denoted by a sensate, uh, such as, for example, this sensate it includes two lemmas, love and enjoy, with a gloss. Uh, so, uh, also, I will talk about them in the next slide. Uh, get pleasure from as a gloss and an example, uh, I love cooking. Lexical semantic resources in general uh, are divided into two categories, mon mon monolingual and multilingual. Monolingual, uh, these resources maps uh, lexical items between in one uh, language, but in multilingual, uh, the, these resources maps between lexical items in different languages. Uh, for example, on um, monolingual resource, uh, Princeton WordNet, and uh, on multilingual lexical semantic resources, UKC, Euro WordNet, Multi WordNet. Uh, some applications uh, about lexical semantic resources, uh, the machine translation, formation retrieval, word synthesis migration, Uh, semantic web and others. Okay, this is in general about uh, lexical semantics and lexical semantic resources. Uh, what's about the quality? The quality in general, the quality of lexical semantic resources 
depends on the contents of the lexical semantic resource. The contents of lexical semantic resource, uh, they are the synsets and the relations between synsets. So what is the synset? The synset is a set of uh, synonyms uh, and also it consists from three parts. First, uh, the first part is the lemma part, which is a set of syn uh, synonym words. The second part is the gloss, which is a natural text that describes the synset. The third part in the synset, which is the synset examples, which are which uh, huge, uh, usually are used to explain and clarify the sense of limbs. As we see the uh, example below, the, we have two synsets. The first one is about car, and the second uh, one is about the motor, uh, the motor vehicle. Uh, if we see, for example, the first uh, Sinset, we have the lemma's car, auto, automobile, machine, motor car, and uh, we have the gloss in the first sinset, a motor vehicle with four wheels and usually propelled by an internal engine. Uh, also, the last part is the example. He needs a car to get to work. This is about the first sinset. Uh, also for the second, uh, since it, uh, it, it will be the same uh, as the same for the uh, for the first, but the uh, relation between these two senses can be, for example, as the following: a motor vehicle is a hibernate of a car, which means uh, uh, one lemma from the second uh, is connected with the uh, other uh, with a lemma from the first using uh, a hibernate. Uh, relation. Okay, what are the challenges for lexicon quality? Uh, okay. Without, yeah. What are the challenge, uh, challenges for lexicon quality? Uh, we categorize uh, these challenges, uh, in, in fact, into uh, categories. The first one, uh, which is the underload category. And the second one is the overload. Uh, what's mean the uh, underload uh, challenge? In this category, uh, in general, uh, the uh, missing some of necessary items in, in the lexical semantic resource, such as missing lemmas or missing relations or together. Uh, for example, on missing lemmas, if we look for, for the following these two synsets, the term a broken, a broken deer is missing from both, as we see in A and B senses. Uh, also, in missing relations, uh, the, 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 there is uh, there is a missing relation between these two senses. Also, uh, uh, between missing, uh, the sense A and sense B, where the first one is uh, has the uh, lemmas correctness, rightness. And the second one, correctness. There is um, there is no relation between fact and social expectations. This is for okay. This is for underload. For overload, uh, which is the opposite of the first one, uh, the, av the availability of irrelevant extra items in lexical semantic resource, such as in, uh, if if it's available. For example, incorrect lemmas or incorrect relations among these synsets. Uh, the big uh, example in, in this category is the bulzemi. Uh, a bulzemi word in general, it is a word that has more than one meaning. Uh, also, uh, a bulzemi synset, a synset contains at least one bulzemi word. Uh, uh, for, uh, if we look for, for the following two examples, the first one, which which ha, which has a uh, incorrect lemma, which is a center. If we look for the following synset, uh, sin, sin, oh, it has two lemmas, center and nerve center. Uh, the, but if we look for the gloss, which is the description of this lemma, it describes the nerve center. So center here is incorrect. Also, for the incorrect relations, uh, there is an example. Turtle dog is a turtle dog. This is a relation between these 
two scent sets. The first one was uh, Australian Third Dove. Third Dove, the gloss is a small uh, Australian Dove. The second one, uh, <coughs> sorry, is uh, the has the Rima Third Dove, and the description uh, as we see uh, any of several old worldwide doves. This is uh, a specialization bluesemi, which means the first one is a uh, the second one, the second one is more general than the first. And in incorrect lemma, uh, coming back to the first uh, example, it, it is uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, incorrect lemma because of the compound noun balsamic. So in general, these uh, challenges faces uh, with uh, or affects on the lexicon equality. Okay. Uh, what's, what is the state of art about the lexicon equality evaluation? Uh, also, uh, we, we categorize the, these approaches into three groups. The first one, uh, the lemma verification approaches. All, uh, the second one, uh, gloss validators. And the third one is the relation evaluation methods. Uh, as as first example uh, in first category, uh, the work of Ramandan at 2007, uh, they presented an algorithm to validate lemmas. Uh, they worked on noun synsets in Princeton WordNet. If we uh, look for the following diagram, uh, the, their approach uh, in general use the hypothesis. If a word is present uh, in a synset, uh, I, mean, I mean, if the uh, if, if this uh, algorithm, for example, uh, get the lemma from sunset from WordNet, it will be validated if there is a definition in the dictionary. They use the also the uh, the dictionary uh, dot com. If there is a, a definition there, uh, which means the, it refers to hibernate and synonym. And uh, this lemma will be valid. This is the core of their work. The second example also uh, on lemma validation is the work of Fahad in 2015. Uh, they introduced an automatic method to discover and solve the sense enumerations. The sense enumerations, oh, the sense enumeration, uh, sense enumeration is a misconstruction that results in wrong assigning of a synset to a term. For if we look, for example, to these two synsets, the first one we look uh, to it before, uh, two slides, which is the center and nerve center. So we, uh, the center here is uh, incorrect lemma. Also in the second synset, the center here is also incorrect because the gloss here is a description for the Shopping mall or shopping center. So the proposed the, the proposed solution that helps to clean uh, the outlier words and noisy lemma. Uh, as another example here, uh, there in, in Arabic ontology, the word markaz, which means center, uh, it has at least 500 senses. So the uh, most of these uh, sensets have this have this incorrect lemma the the last one uh, the, i mean the last example in the first category which is the work of in 2020 they proposed uh, an approach uh, for automatic uh, sense creation in indonesian wordnet uh, my focus here is that they use the manual evaluation when they uh, get the sensets, uh, they use Bahaza, as we see in the flow chart, they use the Bahaza uh, WordNet. Uh, they get the limbs from this uh, uh, dictionary. They may be thing then. Uh, uh, after that, they make uh, clusters for these uh, limbs. And finally, when they are collecting th these lemmas in clusters as synsets, they evaluate these synsets manually uh, with a comparison, with a manual comparison uh, with a gold standard value. The this is the first category. 
Uh, the second category, which, uh, which is uh, about uh, GLOSS, uh, uh, first of all, Gerard in 2006 introduced an approach with six instructions to define correct and complete sensit GLOSS. Uh, this is, this uh, instructions uh, as follow. First of all, since the gloss should start with a super type or the sense it. Uh, the second, it, uh, it should, I mean, the sense the gloss should be written in the form of preposition of ring the reader uh, inferential, uh, inferential knowledge that uh, helps him to construct the image of the sense it. Three, it should focus on the intrinsic uh, intrinsic properties that differentiate the sense from the others. For it should, uh, it should uh, the clause should be include supported examples. Five, uh, uh, also the inconsistent should be consistent with the form and axioms in the sense set. Finally, it should be sufficient and clear and easy to understand. Uh, this uh, in this paper, they recommended uh, the researchers to check if this uh, approach can be automatic or semi-automatic. Fine, uh, the, second, the second paper on the gloss validator, also from uh, Indonesian Ornet, they used uh, here uh, seven features and also they used the decision tree classifier to indicate if the, if the gloss uh, which is extracted from Web documents is accepted or not uh, using decision tree. This work it was uh, by Bornana in 2015. This is the second uh, category. The uh, last category, which is the uh, relation evaluation methods, uh, Nadig in, two, in 2008 presented an approach for hibernate validation. Uh, they, they proposed an algorithm that used the three rules. The first rule, which is uh, focused on the prefix form, such as work and Bible work uh, sense sets, which means the work is a hyper name of the Bible work. In the second rule, uh, if the first rule uh, is, uh, can't validate this uh, hyper name relation, they will, they will go to the second rule, uh, do some queries using internet. The, in the third, they use the, uh, the uh, coordinate terms for the sensets using Hertz patterns. Uh, Hertz patterns, uh, as you, we see here, uh, really it was in 1992, uh, but they use this in uh, their approach. The Some of the... Uh, Buttons, Hertz buttons, as shown in the table below. Uh, okay. The last uh, paper, which it was in the last category, also uh, is done by Prehan 2013. They reorganized the semantic relation of the polysemous nouns in WordNet uh, from uh, lexical to semantic. I mean from implicit relations in uh, at lexical level to explicit semantic uh, to explicit relations at semantic level. Uh, for example, they use these three relations. Uh, if we look for uh, for the first example, the relation form is a homograph which uh, connects the two sensets. The first sensor is, uh, as we see, sack is alcoholic drink. Okay, is homograph with the sense Saki as Mungi. Also, they use the has aspect a relation and is a metaphor. The, I mean, the convert or transform the metanomy to has aspect relation and metaphors uh, from metaphors to is a metaphor as in this example. Okay. The last thing. Uh, our conclusion here, if we look for, for the table, we see uh, there, is no, uh, uh, there is no any method covers the lexical, uh, the quality of uh, the dimensions of lexical equality 
which are the completeness and correctness and connectivity. Uh, really, uh, most of them uh, covers one or two of these. Uh, also, there is no uh, there is no a comprehensive approach that evaluates the synset. Uh, and as we see, uh, we address the main challenges of the synset equality. Okay, that's it. Thank you.